All right, so we're only 24 days out from the election, and we're starting to see some numbers that are quite significant in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Those are the ones that we're going to be going over today because there are some dynamics that we can look at that make it look really good for the Democrats right now. Now, I know a lot of Republicans will say, oh, it's early voting. That's always Democratic. Well, if your election knowledge is only from 2020 and on, yes, that might be the case. But it looks like that we are starting to go back to old ways of voting, voting in person for Democrats. It does seem like the vote by mail numbers are shrinking in some places. So yes, it looks like there's a changing dynamic. So to generalize that Democrats always do better in early voting, well, just go look at anything pre-2020, look you know, by voting method as well and stuff like that. It's a gross generalization that doesn't encapsulate the reality of the changing world of elections. But even with that being the case, let's go ahead and talk about Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, because there are some important counties, at least in Michigan and Pennsylvania, that I want to talk about that could actually be what determines how those states are won. But we're going to just take a little glimpse at what's happening in Wisconsin right now to give you an overall vibe of what's going on. And essentially, to put everything in a nutshell... The Democratic turnout rates in a lot of the strong Democratic areas are higher than the state turnout rate. So we're going to focus on the Democratic turnout rates mostly in this one. So let's go ahead and go to Wisconsin. So if we go to Wisconsin, we're going to look at the turnout rates. Now, these turnout rates, remember, are going to be based on the current voter registration. Now, Wisconsin does something where their official turnout rate is that of the voting age population. And so it's it's a little bit different. So this is of registered voters as of right now and a turnout as of October 10th. As you see, Milwaukee County, which is where the Democrats will get slightly most of their votes, OK, is at a turnout rate about where the state is overall. So that's not as great. Dane County, on the other hand, where Madison is located, is the top performing county for turnout overall. OK, and you can see that is a significant Democratic county, as significant as Milwaukee when it comes to vote gains that they could get. If you see that vote margin from 2020 Rock County, where Janesville is, is doing well at six point eight percent. That is significantly higher than the turnout rate we have now. La Crosse at six point six percent is higher. And Eau Claire is basically right where the state is at 26,000 of a gap in the last election. So that will give Democrats a tiny bit of a gap right now. So if we look at Wisconsin, it is performing quite well with most of the counties performing above the statewide turnout rate. Now that Milwaukee number is a little bit down, but the more and more amount of votes that you can bag right now in these counties that are very Democratic, the better it is on election day that you don't have to chase as many votes. But we're just going to glimpse at this. I want to see some more numbers out of Milwaukee County. And as soon as we get those, maybe we can look at some more data and whatnot. But right now with Dane County, that looks good. And the Republican numbers are a tad bit lower. But let's go ahead and go over to Michigan and just look at some of the overall numbers in the strongest Democratic counties there. So if we look at the strongest Democratic counties, the ones that are most likely to give the Democrats a larger margin of the vote, we can see Wayne County where Detroit is at 6.9%. So that is higher than the current turnout rate of 6.45%. We'll get to that in a few. Oakland County where Flint is, they're at 7.4% turnout now. Uh, Washtenaw County, which is where Ann Arbor is, is at 6.9%. And that number, that number will go up and maybe go up significantly in the next few days. Ingham County, where Lansing is located, is at 96 And it's, I think, the second or third highest performing county in the state as far as turnout. The first is one in the Upper Peninsula, but a Democratic county as well. And then Kalamazoo and the 6.9% turnout we have there, again, more of a Democratic county. Now, the one number I really want to talk about is Wayne County, because one of the problems that Democrats have had over the last few election cycles is that the turnout in many of these urban counties just doesn't keep up with the state. And one of the reasons why we have bad results for Democrats or maybe closer than what we like results for Democrats is just those urban counties do not turn out as much. But these preliminary numbers we're looking at right now does seem to indicate that that's the case. So what I want to do is I want to take Wayne County, the one where Detroit is, and look at it compared to Ottawa County, which is one of the stronger 
or one of the strongest, really, larger Republican counties in the entire state and compare their turnout rates from 2020 to what we see now. All right, so let's go ahead and compare Wayne County to Ottawa County. Now, as you look at the 2020 turnout rates, there is a massive difference. Ottawa is almost at 80%, whereas Wayne's almost all the way down to 60%. So that is a big gap. And remember, this is an election year in which Joe Biden won the state. Now, if we look at the turnout rate so far, Yes, Ottawa is ahead right now, 7.1 to 6.9, but we do see a significant narrowing of that gap as of this point. So this indicates that Wayne County, as we already mentioned, it's performing above the state, is keeping on par with the stronger Republican counties. Now, one thing to remember with Michigan is they have new voter laws when it comes to early vote, vote by mail, and so on, making it easier to vote. Unlike Florida, where they're restricting it more and more, and making you actually ask for a ballot each election, Michigan has done the opposite thing, making it that you basically, as long as you're an active voter, you can get an absentee ballot. So we might see larger numbers earlier on for the Democrats, which is always a good thing if you're a Democrat, especially in these Democratic counties like Wayne County. This could be one of the reasons why we're seeing this very narrow gap, but this gap exists nonetheless. And if Wayne County, one of the poorest performing turnout counties in the state, can actually keep up with one of the largest Republican counties in the state, then this is going to be a really good night for Democrats. So in and around the Detroit area, we really are starting to see Democratic areas perform quite well. So, so far, so good. The voting trends look quite good. The voting turnout looks to be higher compared to the state average, and it's keeping on par with some of the Republican numbers. So again, these are, I'm being cautious, but these are good. But let's go ahead and go over to Pennsylvania and look at the top counties there. So if we look at turnout rates as of October 10th, we see Montgomery County is 9.2% turnout, which is the highest in the state. So all those arguing that if you don't have Josh Shapiro on the ballot, that it might hurt. Well, it seems like Montgomery County, his home county, is doing just fine without him on the ballot. Now, let's go ahead and look at Forest and Wyoming counties, which are second and third when it comes to turnout rates, but you can see it only brings a small number of votes, especially compared to Montgomery County. Now we go to Allegheny County, which is where Pittsburgh is located, and we see a 7% turnout rate, significantly higher than the state right now. And that is a net of 147,000 votes in the last election. So Having a higher turnout rate there means more net votes. Wayne County, which is more Republican, is at 6.8% turnout now. And then if we go to Elk County, we see some smaller counties here, um, decent sized counties like Dauphin County, which is where Harrisburg's located. But you can see we don't have the big margins like we had in Allegheny and in Montgomery County. But then finally, we go to Philadelphia, which is the 10th highest turnout rate right now in the state of Pennsylvania at 6.8%. And as you can see, in 2020, that gave Joe Biden an extra 471,000 votes. The margin was huge there. Now, this is the county I want to talk about, or the city I want to talk about, because Philadelphia, having it number 10 on that list, is pretty impressive, because Philadelphia has been a place where voter turnout has just gotten worse and worse and worse with each election. If voter turnout actually kept up with the state, Democrats would be dominating the state. But the problem is right now is that it keeps on precipitously dropping each election. So let me show you the voter turnout trends since 2004 to now, and you can see how bad it's really got. So if we look at turnout rates from 2000 to 2020, we can see this huge drop or this huge difference between what the state does on a whole and what Philadelphia does. So you can see in 2004, Philly, the county of Philly had a 68% turnout rate and the state was 69. So it was essentially even. But if we go to 2016, where we see one of the bigger drops, we can see that Philly had only a 64% turnout rate to 71% statewide. And then in 2020, again, remember, a year in which Joe Biden won the state, you saw 66% turnout, which, which was higher than 2016, 2012. You can see that it was still 11% less than the entire state. So you can see with Philadelphia County, it has gone down quite a bit. And Philadelphia County is a very strong Democratic County. Now in 2020, Joe Biden won the state with Philadelphia County being significantly lower than the state average. 
if Philadelphia County can at least keep up a little bit more, it does look like it will favor the Democrats in this election. So these numbers that we're seeing coming in early when it comes to the voter turnout is actually a pretty good thing for Democrats. Now let's go ahead and compare Philadelphia County to Lancaster County. Now I would have either used Westmoreland or York, but I don't have enough data on those. It seems like it's taken a while. So I picked like the next most Republican County as far as raw votes coming out of it. And that is Lancaster County. So let's go ahead and compare what Lancaster is doing right now to what Philadelphia is doing right now. So you can see Lancaster in 2020 nearly had an 80% turnout rate, whereas Philadelphia was at 65.9. It's kind of like what we saw with Wayne County back in Michigan, not too much of a discrepancy there. But if we look at the turnout rates, it's a little bit different than what we saw in Michigan. Philadelphia right now is at 6.6%, whereas Lancaster is at 0.5%. So you can see we have this discrepancy between Lancaster and Philadelphia, which again, bodes well for the Democrats because it does seem like a lot of the strong Democratic counties are having good turnout rates right now. So that is really, really good for the Democrats. However, there is one thing that I want to talk about. And while the Democrats are doing quite well, it does seem like the Republican Party is a little bit, I would say, lethargic. They're not performing as well as I expected them to do. Now, as I've mentioned before, when it comes to my predictive models that I do for these races, usually the Democrats in many of these states will have this huge lead. But then what will happen is the vote will just chip away, chip away, chip away, and then we'll get to a point where it's dead even, and then one might go across the other. But it, it, it's pretty dead even. We're not seeing that in this election. The models I have for Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, there have been a small little change, but in the case of Wisconsin, the vote trends are actually going more in the Democratic way. And in some states like Minnesota and Virginia, which I don't think are competitive states anymore, they have both in-person voting and vote by mail now going on at this time and have had it going on for a few weeks now. And we're actually seeing the vote totals in both of those for the Democrats, as far as my projective models, actually increasing with each and every day it looks like the Democrats have a better and better opportunity to win Virginia. Whereas in the past, that was the total opposite. The Democrats would do well. And with each and every day, the Republicans would bring down that margin. And again, remember, they do have in-person voting now in Virginia. That's why that number is so significant. But if we look at these urban centers, Wayne County, Philadelphia County, we're talking about voter turnout rates that can have a significant impact if they keep up with the pace of the state. These new laws in Michigan might make it that Wayne County might actually be able to do that. But when it comes to Philadelphia County, that's pretty impressive itself. It's Philadelphia is doing quite well, but that Lancaster number being down to 5%, it just tells me that Republican voters are not coming out as much. And again, I know this is uh, vote by mail numbers, but still, I expected a little bit more from Lancaster County. Not much more, but a little more. And in vote by mail numbers, it's going to be strongly Democratic when it comes to these numbers. Uh, but we're focusing on turnout rate. And if Philadelphia increases their turnout rate to ju by, by just 3 or 4 or 5 percent, that puts Pennsylvania strongly, well, safely into Joe Biden's Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is total. Jeez. Um, I got to get that one fixed. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Thank you all very much for joining me. Please go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and everything like that. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.